As a product of the 90s, I was very much into the Pokemans as a kid. I had the trading cards, figurines, anime on VHS, and of course, the video games. I dabbled in a little Pokemon Y and Pokemon Moon on 3DS, but ultimately I pretty much dipped out on the franchise after the second generation. After 2017's Breath of the Wild reinvented the Zelda formula, the Pokemon Company attempted to reinvent the Pokemon franchise in a similar way. And guess what? They did a great job. Pokemon Le Pokemon Legends Arceus. It's a pretty great game, right? While the game is incredibly ugly and has its issues, it also did make a lot of great changes to the Pokemon franchise. Hi, I'm Frank, and in today's Franks 5, I'll be naming five of my favorite additions, changes, and features added to Pokemon Legends Arceus. These are my personal opinions, so if you disagree, too bad. Seriously though, let me know what I missed in the doobly-doo. Number five. I've been out of the Pokemon loop for a little while now, but I do remember that back in the day, specific evolutions of Pokemon could only be acquired by trading with friends. This was a huge inconvenience as it required having a friend that owned a copy of Pokemon and a link cable. Annoyances like this can now be avoided, as Pokemon Legends introduced a new item that eliminates the need to trade. The Linking Cord. Shocker, right? With the Linking Cord, Pokemon like Graveler, Haunter, and Kadabra can now be evolved at will, very similar to how the stones worked in previous generations. Speaking of, many of those elemental stones return in Pokemon Legends, along with some new ones. For example, the Electrolyzer, which was introduced in last year's Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes, make a return, allowing you to evolve Electabuzz into... Electrovere? Uh, Electivere? I don't know, this is all still new to me. These items can be obtained via time distortions spread around the game's many landscapes, as well as being purchased through the Merit Saleswoman located in Jubilife Village. Having these items readily accessible greatly speeds up the process, as well as making it much more convenient to obtain these evolutions. Number four. While it appears as though the mainline series continues to add on to the complexities of the battle system, Pokemon Legends battle system seems to have had a bit of a simplification from the previous games. They removed some of the newer features introduced in the more recent titles, such as Pokemon Sword and Shield's Gigantamax forms and Pokemon X and Y's Mega Evolutions. Removing features doesn't sound like a good thing, but honestly, I prefer the cleaner, more straightforward approach Pokemon Legends took. While they removed some features, they added in the ability to master a move. Once the move's mastered, it allows players to perform either strong or agile attacks. Agile moves will deal less damage, but will increase your chances of attacking twice in a round. Strong moves deal much more damage, but at risk of losing out on a turn. Strategically mixing up the types of moves used feels very fresh, and it more than makes up for what they removed from the battle system. Game Freak also improved a lot of the annoyances the system has been plagued with since Pokemon Red and Blue. They continued to streamline the battle system by implementing seamless battle transitions. Entering and exiting the battles is almost instantaneous. Grinding for wild Pokemon is made much more tolerable as you're no longer wasting time in between the battle animations. Battles no longer feel disjointed from the game's overworld, and they now take place wherever you and the wild Pokemon are currently situated on the map. The trainer character is also able to freely move around during battle, which allows you to change the view and the angles. Right after a battle concludes, your player character will continue on his open world quest exactly where he was standing at the close of the battle. This even includes after being defeated in battle, as after all your Pokemon faint, you simply leave the battle instead of blacking out. You can still freely roam around without any active conscious Pokemon, which again, keeps the game's flow concurrent. The combination of battles taking place wherever, and being able to adjust the view in live time, makes for some much more dynamic scenery during battles. Number three. Keeping up with Game Freak's trend of streamlining many of Pokemon's features, they really improved managing each of the Pokemon's moveset. Moves can now be swapped in and out at any point while outside of battle. This can be done from anywhere with the Pokemon in your party, as well as at the village pasture for the Pokemon that you're currently storing. Having your Pokemon learning and relearning moves is no longer locked to repurchasing and finding the various HMs. Once a move is learned as they level up, it can be swapped in and out of the Pokemon's active moveset at any point. Trial and error and playing around with what moves work best will result in having the strongest team of Pokemon at your disposal. Thankfully, teaching your Pokemon Cut or Fly is no longer required, freeing up all of your Pokemon's active moves to be battle-specific. This allows you to really customize each Pokemon to have the compatible moves that you want, making your Pokemon truly feel like your Pokemon. Number 2! One of the biggest changes to the Pokemon franchise Legends introduced was the inclusion of a catching mechanic inspired by Niantic's Pokemon Go. 
While Pokemon Go is made to be very simplistic for mobile phone use, the catching mechanic in Legends feels way more fleshed out and action-oriented. Players must be strategic in how they go about catching the many wild Pokemon they'll encounter. Each Pokemon has its own personality and will react differently to the player. Some may run up to you just asking to be caught, whereas others won't be as friendly. Smaller, more meek Pokemon may run and hide in the tall grass or fly away, whereas more aggressive Pokemon instead will target the player and attack. If you're not careful and you get attacked by too many Pokemon, you will black out, losing part of your inventory. There are many ways to go about catching the wild Pokemon in Pokemon Legends Arceus, so it's important to strategize. Some Pokemon will be much easier to catch off guard, making distanced stealth catches a must. Others may require the use of your array of throwables, which include cakes, smoke bombs, snowballs, and a variety of different berries. Each item has a different result, which will be more effective on specific Pokemon. For example, throwing a rotten apricorn at a weaker wild Pokemon will temporarily stun them, allowing them to be snatched up more easily. Many Pokemon will attack you as soon as you're spotted, forcing you to either flee or throw one of your Pokemon into battle. And yes, Pokemon can still be obtained by weakening them in battle, but strategically throwing a Pokeball or using items outside of the battle will greatly impact how catchable they are. Plus, this new throwing mechanic really makes Pokemon Legends Arceus feel like a much more action-oriented role-playing experience. All of the main campaign's enraged boss fights require that throwing mechanic. Skillfully throwing the required bombs at the enraged Pokemon is essential in defeating them and progressing with the story. These sections are definitely the most tense part of the game. This is a much, much more action-oriented combat system than anything the main franchise has seen before, and definitely feels like a more mature step up for the series. Number one! Pokemon Legends Arceus doesn't have a completely open world environment like Breath of the Wild, but it does have many large open areas to explore. The different landscapes vary from rural forests, ancient ruins, to snow-capped mountains. Each area is filled with various items to collect and Pokemon to catch. As with any Pokemon title, shiny variants can be found hidden amongst the other Pokemon. Exploring around the environments hunting for shiny Pokemon is a blast. Searching every nook and cranny will be crucial to those looking to complete their Pokedex, which is kind of the main storyline and focus here. There are 28 unknowns scattered around, some of them being very well hidden. While the aesthetics are quite ugly and barren, the later acquired Pokemon will allow for easier traversal across these lands. I really enjoy just hopping onto one of the maps and freely exploring around, which is something I can't say I've ever experienced in a Pokemon game. There's also something very satisfying about going around on a mission to collect different crafting components. Resources are aplenty, giving you something to do in this slightly desolate world. Exploring around an area for a while will become more beneficial the longer you explore, as random space-time distortions will appear in random locations. These distortions spawn high-level Pokémon to battle or catch, as well as many rare evolutionary items mentioned earlier on this list. While the story is very linear and required to open up the game's setting, once the first half of the campaign is completed, the game really opens up being that open-world exploration Pokémon game many fans have been begging for. You can now be the very best like no one ever was. L literally since everyone in this game is afraid of Pokemon. Well, we got the Pokemon game we wanted. Sorta. That's five things I personally really think Game Freak did right with Pokemon Legends Arceus. I'm not the most knowledgeable Pokemon person on the platform, but I think I made some good points. If I missed something you think is crucial, let me know in the comments section. Also, please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified of future Frank endeavors. Thanks a ton for watching, and until next time, peace.